All right, guys, I promised to record the audio this week. <laughs> I did try to redo the video from last week, and to be fair, um, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> not, not in a negative way, it's just like I'd spent so long doing it, and then like, I just couldn't get motivated to do it again. Um, but today's video is entitled Me, um, which isn't actually it isn't actually uh, in a selfish way, it's more to do with um, recognising stuff that you can do yourself. Um, I mean, I've been sort of reviewing uh, millennials and stuff lately, um, just because I think they get a hard, hard bash. Because they've got all the technology, they seem to be a lot more depressed than a lot of other people these days. A lot more argumentative, like teenage style. Um, like, uh, what's his name? Harry Enfield's, um, I oh, can't remember the guy's name now. <laughs> Guys, one of his characters. Um, where he's a teenager. Well, the, the point being this, they can be a bit like that, but what's causing it? And, um, it's the same as over-entitlement. It's because they've been spoon-fed it. Let's be honest, everything you have, if you're a bit older, is actually something you would have inherited from your parents. I mean, it's a bit like, um, I don't understand why kids have got mobile phones in schools. And you're, it's not the kids asking for them, it's the parents pushing it. It's the same as um, everybody's got to get good grades. It's the parents that are often pushing, my kids are better than this, blah, blah, blah. And then you end up with this false education system where there's a lot of qualified in the sense of got it on paper but um reality is they're not up, up to par and uh, to actually be able to do the jobs which then has the knock-on effect in the future because they do a job that they can't do or um they get into a job where they don't understand you may be stuck in the same job for years um and see that they're not actually moving on quick enough it's all fake and social media is that way and it's a bit like when I don't produce videos every week I have to stop myself and sometimes say you don't need to My, nothing's happened this week so why produce something um, that's low value um, so from that perspective that's why me um, sometimes I disappear for a period of time I'd be either too busy or I've got really nothing that either I've got nothing to say or too much to say because it could be political and I'm just like keeping out of that one um, because one of the key things I say a lot these days is what's the output um, if there's no benefit or a positive output why bother why bother you know it's a bit like the Tory leadership um, it's like picking the best idiot as far as I'm concerned <laughs> um and only a fool argues with a fool. So I look at it, those two and it's just like, don't waste your time. <laughs> you're not you're not in a winnable situation because all it's, for me, it's just highlighted how bad the uh, political system is and who we see as uh, MPs. I can't say leaders because that's just wrong. <laughs> People in positions of power that they shouldn't have. Um, but it's because there aren't enough... Uh, normal people that actually put themselves forward for it and to be fair I would hate working in that environment as well imagine being surrounded with half these people anyway back on to what we're talking about so I can understand that um, a lot of the frustrations with younger the younger generations um, is actually not them it's actually been given to them. It's everything that's, that they've been brought up with. We've encouraged it as, you know, parents, as adults, or as uh, society. We dropped all this on them, and this is the outcome. Now, there's two sides to that. Firstly, it, no wonder they're miserable. But secondly, it needs changing. Um, I do think limiting access to technology is useful for kids. I do think it's just as important for a kid to read a book as it is to spend two hours on Google or YouTube. <laughs> um, in fact, the book's more useful. Um, I do think things like TikTok, I just don't understand. I mean, I put some of my own videos up there about airports and stuff, but the dancing around stuff, I don't understand it. 
I just don't get the point. Um, and I know I'm not missing something. <laughs> that's it. That's what makes it worse. It, you, it is from everything I can see, just pointless. Um, don't get me wrong. Wrong. The funny stuff. Get it. You know, I do have a sense of humour, and I do like seeing people fall over and animals doing stupid things now and again. But back to back for three hours now, ten minutes of cheer yourself up day. It's healthy to do that, by the way. Um, if you have a crap day, have some of these little funny videos at hand just to cheer yourself up and take your mind away for things for two minutes. It is healthy that way. My eyes have gone red for some reason. I must be the... Uh, so I'm using some uh, La Royale. Um, yeah, must have got in my eyes. <laughs> That'll be no good for the animal testing because... My eyes are too sensitive for most things. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to pass anything. Um, yeah, I was using some L'Oreal uh, body wash and it seems I've got in my eyes and made them all red. Um, yeah, so the point being is, is one of the key things I've started looking at is how I do things as well. Because it's all right to be critical on others. Because um, I do think there's too much of that. Um I often do it in a very different way and trying to understand why somebody's doing something or what their motivation is and often it's they've got other issues or it's for self gain, you know, try and push somebody out of a job role so they can move into it. There's always something behind it. It's never um, people just doing it because they feel like it. Um, it's, there's always some motivation in there in the first place. But one of the key things, um, I'm reading a book at the moment. I've got it here for now. Uh, it's a soft skills book, which is back to front by looks of it on the camera. Um, which basically sort of discusses how to deal with different types of people, how to persuade people, and um, different approaches. Because I, I know I'm fairly blunt. Um, because, to be fair, I think I get too frustrated with stupidity because uh, sorry that's unfair repetitive stupidity where you see the same things in say, uh, different companies etc it's it, you get to that point where I've had enough of it and I suppose this is where a lot of people just say I can't wait to retire I mean Boris Johnson I would say suits a director in my industry too often he is too too close to reality to many of these people in the sense of they're just bumbling idiots. Um, they just waffle their way through the day. There is too many of them. Um, and unfortunately, I think <laughs> he's too common in British business, um, his types. But the whole point is, is recognising this sort of stuff. It's the same as... If you know the millennials or whoever it is, they, they, there's always something that's there. Um, it's the same as somebody works for you, because um, I've seen it last few days, a few days, last few years. Because um, I was working at quite a difficult company, and I've had some feedback from multiple peoples, peoples, people um, around. They've had some positive thoughts about you know the way you know I've shown them something or supported them, um, because a lot of your job is, um, I don't like using the word leader or boss or whatever. I just see people as people and that's it. You know, we're just going through the day. Everyone's got a different job, task, whatever. But as somebody is responsible for others, it's not just that they finish their job on time. They meet deadlines. They, they um, um, complete the tasks that you you need, you know, because that's that's the old way of thinking about business. What you're actually doing is making sure they have the right tools to do the job, making sure that they're capable of doing it. If they haven't, help them, support them, train them, whatever you need to do to get them to be able to deliver what you need. But also, you've got a responsibility these days where you've got to go to the next level. I mean, I'll advise somebody, if I don't think that that job's right for them, I'll tell them, I said, I don't think this is right for you. You're not happy with it. You, you can do something else. Or 
get you know go down this route you can go on this career path and you can accelerate you know move from one job to another um and work your way up through a business you know i don't mind somebody getting ahead of me in business because it means i've done my job right it means i've actually helped somebody as well because that's i think there's too much of that missing too many people are out there for themselves but if everyone's out there for themselves guess what it makes a crappy work environment i'd much rather do little things for people you know like holding the door for somebody or asking how somebody's day is going or just phone it up and say you know how's how's your kids how's this or, you know if you you know if you, you know for example say someone's having marital issues you, you just turn around and say you know if you ever want to go for a chat give us a shout and we'll go out for a beer after work or something it's it's just saying look i'm a human too you know but a lot of the time the way society is built up now with this social um environment that is very unsocial very isolating um having that ability to say I just need somebody to talk to or having somebody to talk to can be quite difficult for a lot of people um, in the same way the, it's the little things that can brighten somebody's day or make their day even you know like I said <laughs> opening the door for somebody um, holding the lift open rather than watching it shut and going oh, I didn't see you there when you did <laughs> It's much better to open the door for them and you know press the button, just keep the door open until they get there. Um, you also find if you're working out uh, more positive stuff um, and your focus is on that, to so just to think, what well, what can I do today? Um, you, you, your outlook's better, and you'll go home happier, and you'll you'll think you achieved something. And I say think, because you may not know. <laughs> because you may have opened the door for somebody. There might be a really miserable git anyway and gave you no recognition. But deep down, they're probably thinking, I'm glad you held the lift open for me. But the point is, if there's no recognition, you may think that it's been positive. Um, I mean, some of the best positive moments I've had is like when we did the... Uh, after Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, um, I gave away a lot of um, a lot of stuff and money um, because I said to my wife, I says, you know, we can recover this in a few months. These some of these people are not going to recover for a decade. They've lost everything: house, roof, everything they own. So yeah, we'll have a few months of hardship. Let's do it. And we, you know, we went up to the um, look. Well, it was three places we went to in the north. But we took up, like, water, candles, matches, rice. Stuff just to get people by. And very, very humbling experience giving stuff away. Because for me, I like to sit in the background. I don't really want to be recognised as doing it. Um, but when you have people coming up and thanking you, and yet you're actually even trying really hard not to be noticed, it's it's very humbling experience. Um, but you remember that because you made a difference. Now, I'm not saying go out there to make a difference because it's not all about that. If, if you do, that's good. If you um, made somebody smile for the day, that's good. You don't have to be world-changing. It's the same as in a career. I, I envy sometimes the people that could do the same job for their entire lives because... When you talk about them, they don't talk about the job. <laughs> they don't care about the job. You know, clock in, clock out, this, this, on a metal press, sh, 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 or 12 hours a day or whatever. They're talking about football. They're going fishing at the weekend. They talk about the family. I'm going down at the pub. It's quiz night. Now, I envy it. Don't get me wrong. Um, they're, they're lying. They're, they have reached a point of being content. Now, I couldn't live that way. I, that's, that's, that's the point. That would frustrate me to death, thinking this is my life. I'm in a fishbowl. Um, but at the same time, I envy the fact that they've reached a point of being content um, in such a simplistic way. You know, it's where they have a problem is when they shut the factory down. 
or uh, where the family life breaks down or something else because their life is on a it's just on a hamster wheel it's just turning and it can really um, disrupt it because they didn't think that far ahead or were expecting to have change um, my life is often chaotic n not in a financial or um, distressing way but what you have is it's a bit of a roller coaster because we move countries we've um, changed careers changed jobs had our own companies um, built things up from scratch gone to a country and just started trying things and just try to find a way but in all honesty that is my <laughs> that's my um being content because like now we've got the house that's the main one because for me the pressure comes off on uh, if i get hit by a bus because the house is fully insured um the insurance payment is higher than the, the value of the property we're paying it off in in large chunks as well um so if i got hit by the bus april and the kids will be fine the cost of living in spain is very low finding work isn't difficult you know even if you're working part-time where we are um because you know if you have no mortgage and you're just paying for food electric and water it ain't that hard to live there um but I like to be doing stuff. So for me, it's 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 been able to um, find your path, you know. And like I said, sometimes I do envy the fact if you can just go, all right, I'll just go to the factory. Okay, I'm going to the fishing, I'm doing this. You think I wish I had that life? It was so easy, but but I know I can't do it. I know I can't do it. I like having the chaotic stuff of trying to do things and push it and go to the next level. Um, and I was speaking to a friend of mine yesterday about it because we were talking about me, myself and April being the opposite. But he was saying he's the same as April where it's like keep your expectations low and all this sort of stuff where I'm push, push it to the max. Um, keep pushing forward, trying harder, doing better. Um, but that's me you know that's the thing I recognise that's that's where I come from um, I'm competitive I like driving now that's, that's that keeps me motivated and this is the thing where you've got to look at yourself What, where do you reach to be content um, like I say making other people happy I love it, it you, you'll find it makes you feel more positive um, because you make these little differences and it's surprising Years down the line, I've had people come up and say, Matt, um, you did this, whatever. And I've completely forgotten about it, but they didn't. You know, I remember um, one, of, one of the girls I was working with probably 10 years ago, his wife had a cancer scare. And he, he remembers that I was the only person who phoned him up to ask him how his wife was. And don't bother coming to work, I'll cover for you. And, you know, I'll just say, you're working from home this week or whatever, if anybody asks me, but as far as I'm concerned, you're still here. Um, and I'll do his, do his work for the week. But but the point being is, other people were like, oh, where is he? What's going on? Why? You know, it's like, you know his, his wife's potentially um, got cancer and your only concern is yourself. What is wrong with you? It's peculiar. But that's today's society. Too many people are like that. Um, but rather than moan about it, I do think it's it's a me thing. Let's try and do some positive stuff. Let's just make little changes and see what happens. Let's let's have a week of trying to do stuff um, to see if we can power, positively influence things around us. Um, and it's surprising how little some, some things are because it's the same on the other way around. Um, because you can have the same, a, a negative effect for um, doing things in a different way. I mean, where I stay here, be quiet here, um, there's a guy that moves stuff um, on purpose. Now, I know he's doing it to irritate people, but the point is, I just ignore it. 
Because <laughs> it doesn't bother me. If we move something like from a left side to the right side, you know, like a plant pot or something, I'm not bothered. <laughs> I don't care. But I know that's one of his things to try and, and, and try and get raw people up to, because for whatever reason. But but the point is that's the opposite side of it, and I do hear sometimes when people go off on one because he's done something, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't really care. <laughs> I've got bigger things to worry about. Um, but but I'm just saying there's two sides to it. You know, if somebody turned around and I don't know put a load of ice cream in the freezer and says, help yourself. People love all that, you know. It's just, it's just little things. But, um, I mean, I'm sure the kids, the kids in the Philippines, a bit, it's been, <laughs> it's been a few years now. None of them are kids. Some of them have got kids. Um, but I'm sure they'll remember the, the parties, the, the sweets we threw away at Christmas, you know, where you throw them off the balcony for all the kids to grab and all that sort of stuff. It's just these little bits, the same as when I, a lot of my childhood was in Germany. Um, and it's, it's just those little moments that you remember all the way through your life. It's the same as if <clears throat> in school you often have a relationship, not section one because that's a different thing, um, with a specific teacher, a teacher that put you on a path or um, motivated you in a certain way or just left a mark that was positive now when you think about it that teacher is probably the only teacher you remember from that school how peculiar is that but that's my point that's how much of a difference you made with the small small thing that you did or they did to you and I'm like I said we're not talking Jimmy Savile material here we're, we're talking about where somebody you know said you were important or you did something that just got you motivated you know um could be in sports for example when it's like oh you could run for the county or whatever it's having that moment and an individual that took you to that next level and pointed you out that you are good at this or whatever it made a difference but anyway guys um just thought i'd throw this one out there today and hopefully it's got some audio Please leave some comments because it's a bit quiet out there. Um, and if you want me to discuss anything else, let me know. Thanks for watching.